Hi, I'm Sophie Lee Goldman with Confluent. Let's get started learning Kafka streams. So before we get into what is Kafka streams, let's take a step back and talk about what is Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is an event streaming platform. It's distributed, so it's scalable and elastic, and it's fault tolerant. And the fault tolerance property is gained by nature of being distributed and by replicating the data across the storage nodes. So the storage nodes in Kafka are called brokers. And these storage nodes are just an instance of the Kafka storage layer process running on your, your server or your laptop, whatever that may be. Now, at the heart of each broker is this concept of a log. It's not really the, the log that most application developers might think of. Uh, this log is a file, and it's a special kind of file. It's a file that holds records or events. These logs are append only, so as these events come in, they get appended to the end of the log, and at that point, they become immutable. So once immutable, that means they, they can't be changed, they can't be updated, and they don't go away. So this means that unlike some of the message queuing systems you might be familiar with, Kafka records will be stored forever and they won't disappear as soon as they are consumed, like a typical message queue. Now, you don't really want to be storing infinite data, uh, though, you, though you can with some of the tiered storage features. You don't always want to and you don't always care about data past a certain point. So Kafka lets you configure a retention on the logs that are stored by Kafka. This can be in terms of uh, a size, like a certain number of gigabytes for your data set, or in terms of time, like you don't want to keep records past seven days, which is the default in Kafka. So in Kafka, you can set this retention time uh, for each topic specifically. Now, a topic is really kind of the manifestation of a log. Uh, and in Kafka, a topic is a logical grouping of events, usually the some relation to each other. So you might have a Kafka of customer purchase events or uh, user addresses. Usually it's going to be something that uh, relates to one another in some logical way. And the topic itself really is just a, a name that is given to the log. So on the broker, they store each, uh, each log in a directory named by that topic. Now you have your data in Kafka on these brokers, and now you might be wondering, how do you get it in there and how do you get it out and how do you do something with it? Data is not really any good to you if, you're just, if it's just sitting there on a node. Well, Kafka has a producer and consumer client API, and that is used to do both of these things. The producer client is responsible for getting the data into Kafka. The producer client will send a produce or a send request along with a batch of records and the name of the topic that these records should go into. Now, once these records get appended to a topic, they are going to be appended at a certain position in said topic, and this position is what's known as an offset in Kafka. Now, the consumer can use this offset to specify where in the log it would like to start consuming from. So a consumer will send a, a fetch request uh, along with the name of the topic that it would like to consume re records from and potentially an offset that it has uh, started reading from. So this could be the zero offset at the very beginning of the log, or I could say I only care about records starting from at the time that I'm consuming and only send me new records, or I can subscribe to uh, the log at any position in between using the offset. So the offset really identifies a record and its position inside the log. Now, a lot of the time you're going to be doing nothing but producing and consuming from the log. Uh, this is a pretty common pattern where you have your data in a database somewhere, or you have your application events coming in, and you really just want to get them either to Kafka or out of Kafka uh, as you are attaching different things and streaming your events through Kafka. So for this, you can use the producer and client API, but you would end up writing a lot of pretty common and, and boilerplate code to do so, uh, as you would just be sending the records and, and receiving them. Now, of course, Kafka makes this easy for you as well. Kafka provides what is called Kafka Connect, which is really just a framework that does all that boilerplate code for you. And you can write different connectors for specific databases uh, or common sources or sinks of data that you might have. So for example, if you have a MongoDB instance, you don't have to write your own producer and consumer application just to get data in and out of there. You can just hook up the MongoDB connector and it will do all that for you. Connect is useful when you just want to get data in and out, but often you want to do something more useful with the data that is in Kafka. And that's where Kafka Streams comes in. Kafka Streams is the, the streaming engine and of course the topic of this course. So let's give an example. Uh, how would you process events in Kafka? 
to take like a, a concrete example here, uh, imagine we have a widget factory. So you're producing widgets. They have some kind of sensors that are on the production line. And these sensors have data about the event itself, metadata like the timestamp, the, the ID, uh, the widget type. And then there's the actual reading or the data. So that might be something like the temperature in Celsius uh, or the weight in this case. You know, you want to make sure that the temperature isn't too high or else it might imply that something is wrong with the widget. Or if the weight is too low, then there might be some manufacturing flaw uh, that you would like to inspect. So you have this information flowing through Kafka in this widget schema. And you want to do something with it. So here's how you would actually write a consumer and producer application that did something uh, with these widgets. Now, take, for example, you want to focus on a specific kind of widget only. Maybe you only care about the red widgets. Uh, it's your favorite color, or you've heard that something is wrong with the red widgets. And you want to filter out only the red widgets and send that to a special red widget topic that you can then further process. Um, to do that with a consumer and producer, you have to first, obviously, instantiate the consumer and producer. You want to make sure that you use a try with resources to close them properly and clean up all resources associated with them. And then you get to the actual code itself. So with the consumer, you first have to subscribe to the widgets topic. That just tells the consumer, uh, when I send a fetch request, I should ask for the events that are in this widgets topic. And then you get to uh, a normal event loop for this consumer, where you are pulling for more records from this topic. So for each record that you get, you want to take a look at the widget. Uh, and if it's red, then you wrap it in this special producer record. And then you send it to this widgets topic that you have for the red widgets specifically. So all that code is what you need just to do a simple filtering and consuming and producing loop. And that's not even counting any of the error handling that usually would go into this. So now let's take a look at how you would do something like this in Kafka Streams. So the first thing that you'll notice with Kafka Streams is it's a lot less code. Uh, a lot of the framework of the consumer and the producer is done under the cover, so you don't have to worry about it. Now, in Kafka Streams, the first thing you do is declare this Streams Builder object. And that really just tells Streams what to do and what you want these events to uh, be processed with. So in this example, you would first create a stream from this widgets topic. And all you have to do, rather than deal with any actual consumer itself, is specify uh, the type of the objects in this widget topic. So in this case, it would be a string as the key, and the value is this widget. Now, the key can be anything. Uh, it doesn't really matter necessarily in this case. The, the more important thing here is the widget itself. Now, now that you have the stream, the next thing that you might want to do is filter. In this example, we are filtering for the color red, which previously meant iterating over every single record and potentially dealing with uh, any errors that arise there. Now with Kafka Streams, all you have to do is call this filter operator and specify what you are filtering. You just pass in a predicate, in this case that the color is red, and that's it. And finally, to actually produce it to your output topic, your, your widgets red topic, uh, all you do is call two. And similarly to with the consumer, you tell it what the type is and what to produce it with, uh, in this case a string and again a widget, and that's it, and you're done. So it's really a lot less code, and it's a lot easier to wrap your mind around. One of the main advantages of Kafka Streams over the plain producer and consumer API is that it's declarative, whereas with the, the plain clients API, it is imperative. In the previous example, we were telling the consumer and the producer exactly what to do and how to do it every step of the way. Whereas with Kafka Streams, all you have to do is tell it what you want to be done to these records and not how to do it. And all of that is taken care of you by Kafka Streams framework. So what is Kafka Streams? Kafka Streams is just a Java library that you use to write your own stream processing applications uh, in Java like you would for any other application. It's important to note that this is something you would run on its own, uh, not on the same node as the broker. It's an unrelated process that connects to the broker over the network, but can be run anywhere that can connect to the broker. So Kafka Streams is really powerful because you can build standard Java or Scala applications, uh, not with any extra special functionality that requires running it as a cluster. In other words, Kafka Streams is a standalone application that streams records to and from Kafka. All you need to do is write your application, then build it into a jar file, and execute it like you would any other Java application. 
where you actually deploy that application is entirely up to you. This is very convenient because it means you can easily run it on your laptop for development or on super beefy servers up in the cloud. So no more clusters. You just provide it with the host and the port name of a broker and start the application. Whether you start this on your laptop or on some beefy server somewhere, Kafka Streams doesn't care. It just runs. Combine this with Confluent Cloud and you've got some serious stream processing power with very little code investment. To get started, go to the URL on the screen and click the Try Free button. Then enter your name, email, and password. This email and password will be used to log into the Confluent Cloud later, so be sure to remember it. Click the Start Free button and watch your inbox for a confirmation email to continue. The link in your confirmation email will lead you to the next step, where you can choose between a basic, standard, or dedicated cluster. The associated costs are listed, but the startup amount freely provided to you will more than cover everything you need for this course. Click Begin Configuration to choose your preferred cloud provider, region, and availability zone. Costs will vary with these choices, but they are clearly shown in the bottom of the screen. Continue to set up billing info. Here you'll see that you receive $200 of free usage each month for the first three months. Also, by entering the promo code STREAMS101, you receive an additional $101 of free usage to give you plenty of room to try out the things that we'll be talking about. Click Review to get one last look at the choices you've made, then launch your new cluster. While your cluster is provisioning, join me for the next module in this course.